In my last video, a guy named Will commented saying that he could see some helmets behind me and asked for a reveal. Well, let me go grab them for a sec. So this is my actual helmet I use for karting and also racing as well. Um, I have yet to actually get it painted. Uh, they do come quite expensive to do that. But the one I think he was alluding to was this, which is a replica one-to-one -one size of Stoffel Van Dorn's first helmet in Formulary. Um, as some of you know, I used to work in Formulary and this was given to me as a present, which now sits here in my office. But on to today's video, which is all about AI and machine learning. Now, naturally, AI is happening whether you like it or not. We see it with all types of technology, you know, with Siri, Alexa, and we're also starting to see it now come into visual effects as well. And it's completely changing how visual effects are done in movies. AI and racing, I think it's safe to say, hasn't been getting a great rep recently, just purely because I think the way that it's going about it is in the wrong approach, where certain AI tasks can be taken over, but when you're talking about, you know, replacing a whole driver with a computer, it then kind of takes away the whole meaning meaning of the sport really. But in this video, I wanna try and change that. I wanna see if there is an actual function for AI in racing. And I think I've come up with a solution, which is that AI machine learning can help us create racetracks. So let me explain what we're doing here. There's an amazing website called Runaway, which is giving you the tools to do machine learning for yourself. So that's making brand new images, uh, doing visual effects, all using AI. And we're gonna use this to basically try and create our own Formula One racetracks from scratch. So the process for this is that we need to feed the computer um, reference files for it to then try to gauge, you know, uh, similarities and likenesses and detecting different behavior patterns. So then what it can do is provide us with brand new illustrations based on our previous results. Now for this, we technically actually need around, you know, 500 to 1,000 images to get perfect results. And actually, I don't think there's even a 1,000 racetracks on the globe. <laughs> so my first attempt, what I tried to do was download all the Formula One maps from the website, upload it to the computer, and then try to see if that worked that way. And the results were, Awful, basically. The part of machine learning is trial and error, so me uploading only 15 photos of restaurant files wasn't really gonna be enough. And then naturally as well, we also have to allow time for the computer to learn how these images properly work. And these can take from, you know, three hours up to eight hours, and it goes through a certain amount of steps to try and replicate what those different behavior patterns are. So the first thing I wanted to do was to collect all of the track maps that Formula One could actually race at. And those tracks are known as grade one, which are deemed by the FIA, which basically means they've been homologated that cars going that quickly can be safe and race in those sort of environments. Now there's a bit of confusion because on the Wikipedia page, for example, there's like 44 different tracks you can choose from, whereas on the actual regulations, there's only like 34 you can actually choose from. But basically, if it's been homologated, we're just adding it to the list. Now, even with those included, it still wasn't really enough for the machine to properly do its job. So what I did as well is include some IndyCar tracks and also some MotoGP tracks, because effectively, they could still race there, but just need more, you know, infrastructure in terms of the barriers, you know, grandstands, stuff like that. And then that brought the total up to 65 images. Now it's time to actually train the computer and you need to start off with a base model which the machine learning already knows and then it transfers those images into what we got at the moment and then it can start changing those behavioral patterns and our base model was illustrations of birds so naturally over time it goes from birds into Formula One track and then it starts to use more Formula One tracks as those reference files. Now, some of this process takes from three hours up to eight hours. I let mine run for about six hours. And again, this is trial and error because the more you train your machine, it actually could come out a bit worse, which happened in my instance. So I actually found that after, you know, three hours worth, it actually started to look pretty decent and that's where we could work from. And so now we can run the model and let's start to see the results. Now, I've done this once already, and the initial results were pretty good, uh, but I didn't want to look at it too much because I wanted to save it till I was doing this video, and hopefully soon it starts to come through. Now, it goes without saying that some of the results may or may not look great. However, initially, from the get-go, this is looking interesting. Okay, so this is our first result. Now this one's quite interesting because it kind of looks a little bit like Bathurst as if it was drawn by a toddler. And I haven't included Bathurst into this at all. So that's kind of interesting. That you can sort of see where Monza sort of starts, but if this was Monza, that might actually be all right. This one's quite interesting. It just looks like a, like a horse's head, but quite extruded. However, I mean, that's kind of decent. I think if the straights were a bit, I think if that would be an actual chicane, that could look all right. 
This one would be interesting as well. Like, you know, you got a long right hander, as it were, for uh, going on to the start finish straight. You can sort of see here as well, this is where like the AI, it's trying its best. And so naturally you've got like the main racing track here and you've got these little go-kart ones either side of it. <laughs> and this is the thing with machine learning. Look how many results we're just guessing so quickly of all these different sort of configurations, which in its own right could work quite well. So I want to try and find my favorite design and then let's try and see if we can actually make it look realistic as it were. Okay, so I've narrowed it down to my top three picks and I actually really like these tracks and I can't choose which one's my favorite. So what I'm gonna do is gonna post this on Twitter and ask you guys basically which one you think is best. Now, by the time you're watching this, the voting has already happened and we're about to jump into what the results will be. However, if you wanna be included for next time, then make sure to go follow me on Twitter. The link is down in the description below. So it's now the day after and the results are in and it's track two that won it with 39.7%. So now we're gonna bring this into After Effects to try and make it look a bit more realistic. So we're now inside of After Effects and I've loaded in the track map which the AI has made for us. Um, I've gone around it and made it into a shape layer. And what I'm gonna do now is go in and make some tweaks to make it a bit more refined, a bit more looking like Formula One, and then we should be done. So the first question is which direction are the cars gonna be going? And I think with this, I think anti-clockwise would work nicely. I think we can sort of smoothen out this first corner so then we don't have any like lap one first corner incidents. Cause yeah, you want to sort of start off with quite a, quite a technical section and then it progressively gets sort of easier as you go on. So I think for this one, we're going to do anti-clockwise. So on the first corner here, I'm just going to make some adjustments just so it's a bit smoother. And the white underneath this is just a reference of what the previous configuration looked like from the AI, because I don't want to like move too far away from it, as it were. Just, just, just doing some tweaks. I think here I might make it just a little bit more extruded, just so then it's got a bit more of like a hard right-hand turn that someone could, if they wanted to, send up on the right-hand side if they get a good run out of it. This next bit I think is all fine. Um, this bit I might sort of just, just tidy up a little bit. So I like this little sort of cutback, as it were, because that could be a quick overtaking spot. One Daniel Ricciardo would definitely pull off. <laughs> then here, I think because it's quite a hard edge, so I might try to smooth that just a wee bit. It's a touch more flowing on that section there. Then onto the first proper straight, I quite like that it's got a little bit of a kink to it. This would be our first DRS zone, I'd assume. <laughs> then I think the only other thing I want to change is just this little bump down here. Um, maybe to make it sort of more pronounced. So I'm just imagining the racing line coming off here and then obviously you just want to stick to the outside and then to sweep back in again. So I think, yeah, having a little bit of a, a slow down bump would actually do some good here. Otherwise you'd just be carrying all that speed through. So I think having a little bit of an extra bump could work nicely. A nice little chicane, I think actually. And I think if I just square this up as well, just so then that's more of an actual overtaking opportunity rather than just like a long corner. So now to make it look a little bit more F1, what we're gonna do is just duplicate it, make the inside line white, just make it a touch smaller. Then extrude the black out a bit more. And there we go, there we have it. A AI generated Formula One track. <laughs> so what do you guys think of the track? Do you think the AI did a good job or not? Let me know down in the comment section below. I think I would love to actually race this in real life. Um, maybe there's a way that we can recreate this track on like a simulator or something and we can have like a, a makeshift Formula One race. Who knows? I don't, I don't know how to do that, but maybe we can try and work something out. So if you do want to see that, let me know also in the comments down below. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to click the like button down below. If you want to watch some more videos of mine, you can do so by clicking over there on the left hand side. And if you're new to the channel, then make sure you click subscribe. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.